Hi guys, this is Chi Chi of Make It With Chi Chi. Today I'm going to be showing you how I make basic PJ bottoms for my children, mainly for play or for sleeping. I'm using fleece fabric because it's quite cold at the moment. You can use jersey. I'd recommend anything quite stretchy. So what you're going to do is you're going to fold your fabric in two with the right sides facing each other. I'm trying to make a pair of bottoms that are a little bit bigger than this, well, a little bigger than my son and quite much bigger than this um, pair of trousers. What I'm showing you is the fabric I'm going to be using for the coffee, which is totally optional. So I'm going to use my ruler now. I'm going to draw out the waist. You have to draw that straight because the elastic would hold it all together. You don't want to trace it right as the trousers are at the waistband area. So you can use a chalk to draw this out or you can use um, a vanishing pen which is what I'm using. I'm going to be adding cuff, um, another fabric as, for the cuffing for this trouser so that's the reason why I'm stopping here. If you don't want to add that, that's fine. You can actually just hem the bottom of the trousers and it'll be good to go. People find it confusing because you know with the top and the bottom of this pattern they will just cut out so that's why I'm writing that there you can do that you can write that there if you like or if you know you'd know it then that's fine so we're going to use this um, piece that we've cut out to cut out the next piece it's supposed to be quite identical so that's what I'm doing now You can use your pair of scissors to cut this out or you can use a rotary cutter like I'm using. If you're using a rotary cutter, be sure to use a self-healing mat at the bottom. You don't want to ruin your tables. So there we go. I've got two, um, well, semi-identical pieces um, to do these bottoms and that's what we're going for. When you're doing this kind of bottoms, you want um, stretchy fabric. So you're going to take the measurement of the bottom of the trousers, which for me was 6 inches. I'll take one away from that and then I'll multiply by 2, giving me 10 inches. So I'm drawing a 10 inch line. What, what we're doing right now is getting the pattern for the cuffing. So for the thickness of the cuffing, I'm using 3 inches. And from that 3 inches, I'm taking away 1 inch from either side of this line and giving me 8 inches and then I'm going to draw my 8 inch line three inches away from the longer line and then I'll just join the ends together giving me sort of like um, a four angular I don't know what you call this but yeah and then the bottom the narrow end is where the fold is so this fabric I'm cutting out now is actually folded okay and you see when I take your family's my rotary cutter once again to cut the shape out you're gonna be ne needing two of this for the two cuff for the two legs of the trousers so you need to keep that pattern um, for next time. So this is what it looks like. Okay, you're going to fold it with the good side in um, the, the wrong side out and you're going to pin this. You're going to do that for the two pieces. So you can sew this with a straight stitch and then zigzag the edges just to keep it neat and to reinforce the seam. So you're going to sew that V like I've done here now. So I've stitched it with a straight stitch and I've also um, zigzagged the edges just to keep it clean not that anyone is going to see it really so now I'm going to be folding this over to form the cuff for the trousers you're going to match seam to seam and you're going to fold it now you see that shape of the cuff is not straight and that's exactly what you want to achieve I'm going to use my rotary cutter to cut off the uneven edges just so it looks neat and I'm going to do that for the second cuff as well. Now, this uh, fabric, we're going to come back to the fabric. So we've started the cuff out and that's ready. So with the fabric, we're going to lay down here. Some people might find it confusing what's the top and the bottom. And that's why I said you can write it there if you find it confusing. But I don't. So you're going to lay the good, um, the right side of each fabric facing each other, 
and you're going to pin that curve on either side and that's where you're going to be sewing they're going to be sewing the two curves on, on either side yeah, yeah yeah don't forget to follow me on instagram i put a lot of pictures and little videos of things i do on a daily basis um i don't put everything on youtube but instagram you can see things i do daily so follow me on instagram make it with chi chi right so you pin this and then you're going to go back and sew this with a straight stitch and you're also going to zigzag the edges just to reinforce the stitch you know what boys are like so you need to just keep that neat i've got a serger which is an overlocker and that's what i've used so you're going to open that up and you're going to form two legs see almost looking like a pair of trousers and they're going to match seam to seam again i'm going to sew this um the the inner leg the what's it called yeah it's called the inner leg we're going to sew that And for the waistband, for the waist, you're going to fold that in. But before you do that, you'd need to be sure that this is not too deep for your child. So that's what I'm measuring now. I'm checking it with the trousers and seeing that it's just about two inches more, which is fine for me. And for the waist, um, my son is not around right now for me to measure his waist. I should know this though, but I'm always eyeballing this part. I don't know why. So I'm going to um, use some elastic, which I have loads of because I make these trousers all the time. I'm only going to add an inch, actually two inches I added, which was a little bit big for him, but now I know. Um, two inches to the elastic and um, I'm going to put that aside. Now I've surged the edge of the waist, which for you, if you don't have a serger, you just zigzag that. I'm just measuring to see um, that the encasing is not too big or too small for the elastic. Now where I'm pinning is the part where I will not be sewing completely. We're going to sew this all the way around. I'm going to leave a gap so that we can put our elastic through. I'm using my ruler to make sure that the gap, uh, um, the folded bit is equal all the way around. So now that's sewn all the way around, I'm going to be pinning one end of the elastic to the trousers so that as I'm threading it through the encasing, it doesn't get lost. That has happened, that happens, especially if the elastic is um, much smaller than the circumference of the encasing. So now I'm going to be using the other end, pin it also and then thread it through. And then now it's coming through and I'm going to remove both pins and um, I'm going to overlap the elastic bands, the two ends together. And we're going to sew this with a zigzag stitch or a satin stitch. If we're using a zigzag stitch, you need to sew it about two to three times, put it back into the encasing, then sew up that hole you've left. Now we're going to go for the cuffing. So we're going to match seam to seam the way i do this to make sure that it goes around equally is i pin four um four parts of don't forget that the the cuff is double layer so don't leave any layer out i'm pinning four parts of it equal distance from each other i'm doing the same thing to the trousers and then i'm going to match these pins just watch what i do here and don't forget to match seam to seam so the seam on the cuffing to the seam on the trouser just so that it looks nice and clean so now i've done that to the two legs and i've sewn it all the way around and now we're going to turn our trousers inside out and to be honest with you these trousers are actually ready but me i just like to do a little extra because my kids always asking me what's the front what's the back mommy which one is the front which one is the back so 
I like to put what I call a full drawstring. You can put a drawstring through, but <laughs> I can't be bothered. So I'm just gonna make a drawstring. You can actually just put ribbon there. I so so ribbon there. But my kids love the stretchiness of the the cuff fabric. So I'm gonna use um I'm gonna cut out a piece. I'm gonna hem the two ends of, of the of this long piece, which is what I've done here, and I'm gonna fold it into four. I'm going to hiding the rough edges in. I'm going to pin all that round and I'm going to sew it all round like a, a very long rectangle. Yeah, somebody's come to check on his trousers. <laughs> he wants to play with my pins. So this is what I'm doing. I'm pinning it all the way around with a little help from my guy here. There you go. <laughs> He's cute. Okay, now we're going to sew it all the way around like um, a very long rectangle. And when you do that, when you've done that, you're now going to sew it onto the front of the trousers. I decided this part would be the front because it had um, the waistband was a bit lower than the back on the other side. So this would be the front. And I'm going to sew it just two lines on either side of the seam. And your trousers are ready. It's all done. You can do this with jersey in the summer, on warm days. You can even do this in, with shorts. You don't have to make it so long like trousers. So you can use this method to do anything. Play clothes for your kids. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Follow me on Instagram. And I'll see you next time again with more videos. Bye.